This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about what just happened to Peter Schiff's bank in Puerto Rico. As you all know, Peter Schiff is a longtime opponent of Bitcoin, and so I think what's happened over the weekend is actually extremely ironic, especially because we've been seeing so many crypto lenders close their doors and freeze accounts and stop withdrawals. We saw this happen with Celsius, Babel Finance. Voyager said they temporarily suspended withdrawals. This is probably a more permanent thing. So hopefully you were able to get your coins off of Voyager. There's Vault, which over the weekend announced something similar that they're going to stop withdrawals. And now in the context of all of this, we actually have the closing down of a bank by the Puerto Rican regulators. And this bank is Peter Schiff's bank of all people. Here's his tweet from two days ago where he says, despite no evidence of crimes, Puerto Rico regulators closed my bank anyway for net capital issues rather than allow a sale to a highly qualified buyer promising to inject capital far in excess of regulatory minimums. And then here's the key, the key line. As a result, accounts are frozen and customers may lose money. This is unbelievable. And this is something that very, very rarely happens with banks, especially banks that are regulated under FDIC. I'm not sure whether it applies in Puerto Rico. But it's a great irony that you have this gold bug who understands the history of gold, who hates Bitcoin so much, who who hates the idea of self-custody of Bitcoin so much, goes out, starts his own bank. And he's got a very libertarian background. He knows that regulators are not always friendly. friendly. And then he's so incompetent that he doesn't keep his capital, uh, his capital requirements at the right levels. He doesn't have someone running this who knows what they're doing, whether it's himself or someone else. So as a result, all these people who trusted Peter Schiff may lose money. Schiff emphasized that while he didn't realize the bank was undercapitalized until it was audited, he stressed that it was not a matter of solvency, but regulatory minimum capital requirements. Whoever who is whoever's doing running this bank, you have to understand when you run a bank, it's all eyes are on your bank. You have to follow the regulatory requirements. It looks like Schiff is incompetent in this area as well. The only reason I'm covering this, it's not out of schadenfreude, though perhaps there is a little bit of that, but this in the context of Bitcoin is very interesting, especially with Schiff as one of Bitcoin's major critics since 2012, 2013. Here's the famous quote from Satoshi Nakamoto from the, uh, the white paper, the original email announcing the white paper. The root problem, and this is Satoshi speaking, the root problem with conventional currency is all the trust that's required to make it work. And again, if you trusted Peter Schiff, you ended up getting wrecked in this case. The central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency, but the history of fiat currencies is full of breaches of that trust. Also, banks must be trusted to hold out our to, banks must be trusted to hold our money and transfer it electronically, but they lend it out in waves of credit bubbles with barely a fraction in reserve. So here's the key line here. Banks must be trusted to hold our money. And if you trusted Peter Schiff, you're out of luck. I would emphasize here Peter Schiff, at least as I don't know him personally, but as he comes across on Twitter, he comes across as a fairly nasty human being, I have to say. Again, that's my just my personal opinion. Someone who's been looking out, praying for Bitcoin to go to zero for years and years, and then publicly being so wrong. It's really, it's hard not to be embarrassed for him. He, Bitcoin lives rent-free in his head. He does use it to promote his Twitter account and to get more followers. But the really sad thing is how wrong Peter Schiff has been about Bitcoin. Here's an article from 2013 in which, uh, from CNBC, where Peter Schiff is calling Bitcoin a tulip bu bubble. And the key quote in here is that he says it's a bubble because it's risen from $13.50, this is back in 2013, to $375 in, uh, in 2013. And of course, Bitcoin today is trading at something like 19, 20,000. So he's been wrong for so many years, never publicly apologized, never admitted that he was wrong. And the whole time praying for Bitcoin to go to zero, Meanwhile, the people who trusted him, their accounts are taking a huge haircut. Maybe they won't get any money back. Uh, time will tell. Here's another Peter Schiff prediction from 2018, talking about Bitcoin below 3,800 is not a bargain. And of course, we know that after this, this is very close to the bottom. After this, Bitcoin went from 3,800 to 69,000 
over the, the following 24 months. So here's a guy who does understand uh, libertarianism to some extent in Austrian economics, but he's really, really gotten so many things wrong. And his stubbornness about Bitcoin has been especially, uh, I think, frustrating for him. Here's the great meme I love sharing, where gold is always at about 1700 and Bitcoin goes from a dollar to $10,000 to a million dollars. And meanwhile, Peter Schiff does not adapt his, uh, his view. Now, to be, par to be fair to Schiff, I also want to cite two other quotes here. Uh, here's uh, a tweet. Puerto Rico put my bank into receivership due to insolvency. He points out, the, or he claims that the bank has no debt, no loans, and enough cash to fully cover all deposits. So this is definitely a more, uh, a less traditional kind of bank that's not doing any lending. I don't know if this is true. Of course, this is just what Schiff is claiming. He says he has a qualified buyer offering to buy uh, the bank for from Schiff for $17.5 million plus $7 million in new capital, who pays $24.5 million for an insolvent bank. I don't know. This uh, Schiff might be right about this. He might be telling the truth. Here's another headline that he wants people to read that he says you won't read, but I want to be sh fair and share it here. Peter Schiff's bank, falsely accused by the media of facilitating tax evasion and money laundering, is being closed because even though it's innocent, its premature conviction by the media ruined its reputation and crippled it financially. This is, of course, one of the problems with making a lot of enemies by being against Bitcoin. And also, I would say by being against the state. I believe Schiff's father went to jail for life and, and actually died in jail for the refusal to pay his taxes, etc. So there was a man who put his, um, put his life or put his money where his mouth was. Schiff is a much more cowardly human being. Again, I don't know whether he was treated correctly by the Puerto Rican regulators, but just the irony of this, someone who bashes Bitcoin so hard then being uh, being shut down. And maybe he was shut down innocently, in which case this makes the value of Bitcoin and the Bitcoin ecosystem proposition just so much more attractive. Here's another headline you won't read. I'm quoting because he said, here's another headline you won't read. Gold bug with understanding of the history of gold starts a regulated bank. Just a really bizarre thing, a bizarre thing to do. Eric Voorhees, I don't often quote him, but he had a great a great tweet here. The visionary person naturally perceives value in Bitcoin when realizing that anyone's bank account can be shut down. In other words, they look ahead, they haven't experienced it themselves, but they realize the fragility of banks. So that's the visionary person. The adaptive person is someone who's already gotten burned by a bank and then they move towards Bitcoin. The adaptive person begrudgingly per perceives value in Bitcoin when his own bank account is shut down. And then there's Peter Schiff, who even after all of this happening, of course, is still going to be anti-Bitcoin on its way to 100,000 and 500,000 and a million dollars. So we've talked about Celsius, we've talked about Voyager and Vault and Babel Finance and Terra, Terra Luna, and now Peter Schiff's bank. But I wanna remind you, there's one group of people whose quote unquote accounts, whose money has not been frozen over the past month. And that's every single Bitcoiner holding their own private keys, doing self-custody. Again, not your keys, not your coins. You don't have to trust the banks anymore. We have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is very volatile. It can lose purchasing power in terms of fiat dollars and other fiat currencies over the short period of time. But when you look at longer periods of time, five to 10 years, it always increases in purchasing value. And one of the nice things about it is it cannot be shut down and frozen in the way the Puerto Rican regulators shut down and froze Peter Schiff's bank. The important thing though with Bitcoin, not your keys, not your coins, you have to hold your own private keys, whether you do that in single SIG on a hardware wallet or in multi-SIG using multiple devices and hardware wallets. I cover all of that in these two videos, which I'll link to directly below. Here's the best ways to store small and medium amounts of Bitcoin. Here's the best ways to store large amounts of Bitcoin. And if you're having trouble finding these links, YouTube has done this change. You just have to go down here where it says open description, click on that. And then the upper right hand side, you'll see a summary of the video and you'll also see all the relevant links from the tabs that I have, uh, that I've referred to. So be sure to check out those two videos, especially if you're still leaving your Bitcoin on Coinbase or Gemini or any regulated authority. We see what can happen to banks and the same thing, something similar or even worse can happen 
to if you're holding your Bitcoin on a place like Coinbase, because if Coinbase were to go bankrupt, and I don't think it is, but if it were to go bankrupt, your Bitcoin would not be assigned to you. It would be included as part of the general assets of the bank, and you would be possibly behind uh, right, uh, behind uh, creditors and uh, either unsecured or secured creditors. So it's very, very important to hold your own Bitcoin. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.